Hello and welcome to Pep Talk with me, Mr Pep Brawl. Today I'm up on Dartmoor surrounded by granite. Now we know that granite contains uranium, a radioactive element, and when this decays it gives out radon gas. It's one of the sources of background radiation. But is this decay going to keep happening forever? By the end of this video you should be able to tell me what do I mean by the half-life of a radioactive source? What do I mean by the activity of a radioactive source? And what happens to the activity of a radioactive source as it decays? Now, a quick recap to start here. We know that every atom of a particular element has the same number of protons, but the number of neutrons can vary in different isotopes of an element. We know that from our previous work, okay? And a radioactive isotope, sometimes called a radioisotope, which is unstable like this one here, can become stable by emitting radiation, and we call that process decay, okay? So our unstable nucleus is decayed into a stable nucleus, okay? But what does the active part of the radioactivity actually refer to here? Well, the activity of a radioisotope is actually a measure of the number of unstable atoms that decay every second, okay? The more atoms that decay, the higher the activity. As the nucleus of an unstable atom, and we call this the parent atom, okay, decays, the number of parent atoms in the lump of material will have gone down, okay? The parent atom has emitted some radiation during this decay process, and it's become a daughter atom. So parent atoms decay into daughter atoms, okay? And what this means is there are less unstable atoms, therefore the activity of my lump of radioactive stuff has gone down. So basically, the more parent atoms there are in a lump of radioactive material, the higher the activity is going to be. And as these parent atoms change into daughter atoms, that activity is going to go down. Now, if you wanted to monitor this activity, you could use this thing that we've seen before, which is a Geiger counter, which clicks. And remember, each one of those little clicks that you hear is actually a radioactive particle that's being detected. The number of clicks per second or per minute is actually referred to as the count rate, okay? And the count rate tells us the activity of the material, okay? It's actually the number of counts per second, so the number of clicks you hear per second or per minute sometimes, okay? You, they get recorded as counts per minute, okay? And if we monitored this count rate for a while, what we'd start to see is this count rate is going down as the parent atoms are taught, turning into daughter atoms, and if we monitor the change in that count rate, we can actually plot a graph of it. Now, this graph recorded the count rate over a period of time for a radioactive isotope, okay? And we can see that that count rate is falling. We've got our um, counts per minute over here that our Geiger counter was recording, and this is days passing by, okay? So what can we actually see from this graph? Well, first of all, we can see that our count rate started out as 80, just there, okay? But it started to fall, and if we look, it fell down here to a count of 40, 40 counts per minute. Now, if we have a look there, we can see that actually took a total of two days for that to happen. It's got 80 here, and it took two days for that count rate to reduce by a half, okay? If we look again, we can see that this count rate halved again from, again, 40, this time down to 20, okay, half of 40 is 20, you should realise, okay, and how long did that take this time? Well, that started from two days and took until four days, so again, we've got two days for this count rate to half, both times, okay, and if we look again, 20 down to 10, the count rate is halving again, if we go along here, according to six down there, we can see that it took from the fourth day until the sixth day, so another two days have gone by, okay, it's taken two days for that count rate to half, okay, therefore that means the number of parent atoms have halved, okay, this time that we've got here, two days, two days, two days, is actually referred to as the half-life, okay, the amount of time it takes for the count rate to half, okay, and you'll sometimes see it written as t a half, that's just time a half there, okay, and it's always the same, you can see it's always two days, it doesn't matter how many, um, what the count rate is, when I start looking, after this two-day period, it's always going to have halved. So that's what the half-life is, but we actually need to know the proper definition that we can quote in case they ask us an exam, define what a half-life is. Well, this is the proper definition, or should I say definitions, in fact, okay? Because the half-life of a radioactive isotope is 
the average time it takes firstly for the number of nuclei of the isotope in a sample and that's the number of parent atoms to half so the half life is the time it takes for the number of nuclei in the isotope to reduce by half and there's a second definition okay which is half life of a radioactive isotope is the average time it takes for the count rate of the isotope in the sample to fall to half its initial value okay if you think about it it's the same thing the count rate is generated by the number of parent atoms if the number of parent atoms has well then obviously the count rate is going to half now make sure you've actually written these definitions down you do need to know these you may get asked in the exam it's something that's come up a lot of times before so it is useful for you sometimes just to remember the actual definition okay now, I want to be sure that we just understand exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to show you a little example using my made up element of pepperonium, OK, which is a radioactive element. And we're going to look at what happens as it decays. I've got my Geiger counter set up over here. And at present, it's recording a count rate of 200 counts per minute, 200 clicks every single minute. OK, and I know that my element, my pepperonium, has actually got a half life of 30 minutes. OK, what does that mean? Well, it means that after 30 minutes, half the parent atoms in my lump of stuff will have decayed into daughter atoms. So I'm going to scribble out half of my element there. That's just to show you that I've only got half the number of parent atoms that I started with. OK, but this also means that my count rate or my count per minute will have reduced by half. So although I started out with 200 counts per minute after 30 minutes or one half life has gone by I've now got a count rate of 100 counts per minute okay now 30 minutes later or another half life has passed and again another half of my parent atoms have decayed okay so again I've actually got this section of my original parent atoms left well half of those are going to have decayed after another 30 minutes so i've got half of them of parent atoms but that also means that my count rate is reduced by half it was 100 now it's down to 50 so you can see that it doesn't reduce by the same amount every time it's not gone from 200 minus 100 to 100 then minus 100 again your count rate just halves each time so it's gone from 100 down to 50 this time so what would we expect again 30 minutes later well 30 minutes later half of our remaining parent atoms have decayed away okay another 30 minutes have gone by which means our count rate is reduced by half again this time 50 down to 25 and this will just go on and go on okay uh, we could keep going here if i could keep drawing small enough each time 30 minutes passes half of our original parent atoms decay 30 minutes passes half of our atoms decay 30 minutes and i can't really go much smaller than that okay so to answer my original question at the start that I asked when I was up on Dartmoor, the answer is no, the granite will not continue to be um, containing this radioactive uranium forever. It will only do this until enough half-lives have passed for all the parent atoms to have decayed into daughter atoms. OK, now, although I could calculate how long this would take if I know how many parent atoms I start off with, I can't tell you exactly when each atom is going to decay. OK, and that's because radioactive decay is actually a random process. It happens completely at random. I can only tell you that within a certain amount of time, your counts per minute or your number of parent atoms will have reduced by a half. But I can't tell you exactly when each one of those parent atoms is going to decay into a daughter atom. Now, I really want to test your understanding and make sure you know exactly what's going on here. So I've got another um, half-life graph there, and I want you from this graph to calculate the half-life and then tell me how many half-lives must pass before the count rate drops down to 10 counts per minute. So pause the video, look at the graph, do your workings out, then restart the video, and we'll see if we get the same answers. Hopefully you've paused it, but you've restarted it now, but you've got something written down. So let's see how we would work this out. We're starting off here with a count rate of 80. Now, I need to half that. I need to find out how long it takes for the count rate to half. So half of that's going to be 40 down there. How long did this take? There we go. Started at zero. Along to there, it took two days. Just double check that with another half or half in the count rate there. So we've got 40 here. Let's half that down to 20. Let's just double check. Well, started at the second day, went to the fourth day. That took two days again. So I'm going to say that my half-life up here is two days. 
That's the answer to the first part of my exam question. The second part, though, says how many half-lives must pass before the count rate is down to 10 counts per minute? Well, let's have a look. We've got firstly 80 down to 40. That was one half-life there. Then 40 down to 20. That was two half-lives. Then 20 down to 10. That was three half-lives before my count rate got down to 10 count per minute. OK, so I would put there it has taken three half lows for that count rate to drop. So that's what we need to know about the activity of radioisotopes and half-life. It's quite a tricky one, so any problems don't hesitate to tweet me at Mr underscore Pepperell or email me and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for stopping by.